Let's learn in this video how to run Azure DevOps pipelines inside containers running in a Kubernetes cluster and how we can scale out the number of these containers using the project KEDA, Kubernetes Event Driven Development. In a previous video, we have already created the container. We have run that container in a virtual machine and we have also deployed the container into a pod running in a Kubernetes cluster. And when we, we deploy that pod, we use the deployment object in Kubernetes where we can specify manually the number of a replica. But here I have the use case where the number of jobs for my pipeline might be might vary. It could be one job, but it could be also 10 jobs or 20 jobs. And I want to be able to run these jobs in parallel. Or at the same time, if maybe I have multiple pipelines that to could run in parallel, so I don't want to be constrained by running just one or two uh, containers all the time. So I want to be able to scale out and also to scale in. So this video is the third one of a series that started first with creating the Docker uh, container right here using this Docker file, and then using the start.sh file to install the build agent inside the container. And then we have actually uh, created, built this container, we have uh, tagged it, and then we have pushed that container into a container registry. We have tried running that container from inside the host machine and deploying or running um, a job inside that uh, container and that did run successfully. And then we have actually uh, yeah, pushed that container into the registry. And uh, we have also tried to deploy this container into uh, AKS cluster, which can also be done within any Kubernetes cluster. So that's using the YAML deployment uh, file. We have uh, deployed uh, the uh, both or two replica of uh, uh, the pod using this file right here that I show in a second. So that we have deployed a secret containing the Azure DevOps URL and then the name of the agent pool, the Azure DevOps uh, token or the personal access token. And that did deploy the two replica running our uh, container and then passing as environment variables or the required uh, parameters right here. So all of this actually is well documented on Microsoft Azure DevOps documentation on this link. I'll put this link on the commands. And what I have also done is that I have created a new uh, pool agent. So if I go here to the pool agent within my organization agent pools, I will see this new pool agent that I've created earlier by clicking add new pool and then giving it a name. Inside this pool agent, it contains actually uh, two containers or two pods running inside my AKS, those have the same name as my deployment, okay? And then I have a third one running on my uh, machine that I have disabled or turned it off. So today we have two agents. They will be always agent unless I do manually change these two agents to be uh, four or uh, 10 or whatever in my YAML and my Kubernetes YAML manifest file. Okay. But what I want to achieve here is that I want to uh, scale out the number of these build agents automatically. I want the number of the pods in my cluster to, uh, to change or to scale out and scale in uh, automatically depending on the number of the pending or the waiting jobs in my Azure DevOps. So each time I have a new a newer jobs that wants to run in parallel, my number of pods will scale out to support the this uh, uh, running these jobs in parallel. So for these jobs to be able to connect to Azure DevOps, I have created a personal access token with this name uh, right here uh, in order to authenticate and to authorize uh, to my uh, to, to my Azure DevOps instance. So now to enable scalability, depending on the number of jobs within Azure DevOps, I will be using a nice project called KEDA, which is a Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaler. Um, this one have actually multiple scalers that you can see on their official website, keda.sh. Uh, where you will have uh, lots of scalers depending on number of queues in the uh, in the message queue or inside the service bus and many more. And it have one scaler that is right here the one for uh, Azure pipelines. 
Keda, that's an open source project. If you want to use it, you need to install it in your cluster. So you just have two commands to run uh, Helm repo add and then install. So using Helm, the package manager for Kubernetes, it's easy actually to, uh, to install it in your cluster. I have already done that. And then we have here the documentation for the pipelines, how we can use it and how we can configure uh, Keda to connect to my Azure DevOps uh, pipelines. And even more than that, we have a nice article right here, written within the Keda official website that uh, shows all the steps and all the required uh, parameters to make that work. So I have already created my own uh, environment right here in this GitHub repository with all the files and the scripts that I'll be using today. Let me go to that environment in my local machine. So switching here to my VS Code and to the um, console window. So from within here, I have uh, that uh, deployment.yaml that did created to a replica of the pods. Now I want that to change automatically. So to achieve it, I'll be using Keda. So first I have connected to my cluster. I have also installed Keda in my cluster. And now I'm ready to configure Keda to um, auto scale my pods. So to do that, I have defined it here a YAML file that is the scaled object keda.yaml where here I have the triggered authentication object. This one will help Keda to authenticate to my Azure DevOps and get the required permissions and get the token to, uh, to get the number of the weight pending jobs in my uh, Azure DevOps. And have, I have here um, an object that is commented out, which is the secret. Uh, I commented it out here because I have already defined a secret within my deployment, which is this one right here, where I have the environment variables for Azure DevOps pool name and then the personal access token. I reuse these the values from that uh, secret in my scaled object, which is the main object that we have in this YAML right here. So the scaled object is defined within the Keda uh, CRD files. Uh, this one will would have this. Uh, uh, this configuration. So it will scale target ref. So this is the reference of the uh, type of the deployment that it will, uh, uh, it will scale, which is the name actually, Azure DevOps deployment. So that's the name of my uh, deployment right here, AZ DevOps deployment. And then we would have actually uh, some other parameters like here, the mean and the max number of replica. So because it will scale them out and in, so the max number of my pods will be five and then the minimum number is one. This could be either uh, also uh, zero, but uh, it's recommended actually to keep it one because if it's zero, then Azure DevOps will not be able to uh, see if you have uh, an agent run, uh, uh, ready to run the jobs. And then cool down period. So it will wait for three minutes by default in, in order to uh, start uh, uh, scaling down or scaling in the number of uh, uh, pods when they finish running. And then the triggers. So this will be triggered based on the Azure pipelines type of a trigger. And uh, within Azure pipelines, we have it will connect to the pool ID number 38. So just for reference here, the pool ID, that's a value you get from the Azure DevOps portal. If you uh, when you go to uh, the pools right here, you would see in the URL the pool ID, which have the value 38 in my case. And then the organization name, uh, from, it will get it from environment variable from inside the container that is deployed. And then it will use the pipeline trigger authentication in order to authenticate to the Azure DevOps instance. Cool. So let's now go to the demo and let's go to deploy this object. So this object will be deployed into the DevOps agent namespace right here. If we go to deploy it, Nice, now it tells me both objects were deployed successfully. So if I go switch now to Azure DevOps and go to try to run a pipeline in parallel. So I'm going to take this pipeline, for example, where here I'm using this strategy, I'm using a matrix to run uh, in parallel six jobs. So here I have these six jobs uh, with build one, two, and uh, six, and all of them for each job to run these steps, which is just one step that will run a script that will show the host name of the container and then it will print the environment variables. Let's go to run this pipeline, click run, and that will take me to the page, this one here, 
and at the same time i go to watch for the pods inside my namespace so i'll use this command right here get pods dash n and then uh, the namespace and then dash w to say watch these pods so you see here immediately within just uh, 10 se uh, 11 seconds we see new pods coming or have been created by kada in order to support running my new uh, jobs from azure devops and here you see the jobs started running immediately great so now we have these six jobs running inside six containers or almost and uh, all of these containers are also visible from the agent pools if i go to agent pools here yeah i can see five uh, new pods or uh, three new pods created added to the two existing pods so it means five pods to run my five uh, uh, my six uh, jobs Great, so now just within uh, uh, three minutes, we should see the number of these uh, pods that will start to decrease uh, because we have specified the, um, uh, the scale down period to be three minutes. And after three minutes, we can see some of the pods that will start to be in the terminating status. It means they are now scaled in. So SCADA in this case will reduce the number of the pods.